And we're live with JavaScript Air. Hello, everyone. My name is Kenzie Dodds, and we have every single one of our panelists today on one show, which is super exciting. Um, and we're going to be introducing all the panelists to you. We have um, eight panelists and then myself, um, and so we have a lot of people to, to go through today. But I thought that would be really useful for people watching the show and, and keeping up with it to uh, keep up with uh, who's who is talking during this show. Um, and we have some awesome developers here. All of us have really interesting backgrounds, and so this should be a fun show. So before we get too far into it, um, I would like to give a shout out to our sponsors because they are enabling some really awesome stuff for this uh, show. So first is our premier sponsor, Egghead.io. Um, they have a huge library of bite-sized videos on web development. Um, and so, yeah, check them out for content on JavaScript, Angular, React, Node, and a bunch of other really awesome things. I'm working on a, a series right now that is supposed to help newcomers learn how to contribute to open source. So I'm really excited about that one. And then Frontend Masters is a recorded expert-led workshop with courses on advanced JavaScript, asynchronous, and functional JS, as well as a lot of other great courses on front-end topics. And then TrackJS reports bugs in your JavaScript before customers notice them. And with their telemetry timeline, you'll have the context you need to actually fix them. So check them out and start tracking JavaScript errors today at trackjs.com. And then we have two new sponsors. Woo! Wallabyjs is an intelligent and super fast test runner for JavaScript that continuously runs your tests. It reports coverage and other results directly in your code editor. Wow, amazing. Immediately, as you change your code, it's crazy. Uh, check them out at wallbjs.com. And uh, definitely check them out. Their uh, uh, demo video is way cool looking. So very cool. Code Cove. Um, Code Cove is coverage done right. Uh, reduce technical debt by visualizing test performance and um, faster uh, review uh, for your, your code reviews. Code Cove is highly integrated with GitHub um, and provides browser extensions. Learn more at codecove.io. I use them personally, and I think they're great. So let's go ahead and um, jump into a couple other announcements. Uh, if you have questions during the show, uh, any specific questions about any of our guests or anything, um, then uh, you can ask on Twitter with the hashtag uh, JSAirQuestion. And then, as always, follow us on Twitter and Google Plus to and Facebook to keep up with the latest. And then um, also, we are a weekly show. And so next week, uh, we have... Um, another live show that's super, super cool. It's um, about Chakra, the open source uh, JavaScript engine from Microsoft. Um, and they have a pull request out to Node to make it Node work with Chakra right now. So it's like crazy exciting times. Um, it's open source. And it's like, what? This is Microsoft. So cool. Um, so check us out next week. OK, let's get into things. Let's introduce everybody. Uh, and then we'll uh, just go ahead and ask our questions. So I'll go uh, left to right on my screen. So I see Brian Lunsdorf. Say hi. hi. <laughs> hey. And uh, Dan Abramoff. Hey there. And Ihani. Um, I can't pronounce your last name. You'll have to say it. <laughs> Ekachuku. Ekachuku. Awesome. And we're super excited because this is uh, the first time Ihani has been able to, to jump on the show. So woo! Yeah. Um, actually, no. Technically, he was on the the first show with Brendan Ike, um, but uh, wasn't, wasn't talking you know, that much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then we have Getify or Kyle Simpson. Hello. And Lynn Clark. Hey, everybody. Congratulations on your Code Cartoons release today. Thank you very much, and thank you for reviewing it. Absolutely. And Matt Zabriskie. Hello. And Pam Sell. Sully. I keep calling you Pam Sell. Ah. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pam. I'll, I'll get over that habit. <laughs> and Tyler McGinnis. Uh, hello. All right. Let's get into our show. So, um, yeah, we're, we're basically the goal of the show is uh, kind of a conversation amongst each other to kind of get to know each other better and for the audience to get to know um, each one of us. And so the questions we're going to ask is... Um, yeah, you know, kind of more general but and more conversational. But basically, like, what's your name? Where are you from? Um, where you, where do you work? How'd you get into software development? Those kinds of things. Um, and so I think we're gonna uh, start off with Ihani, um, just because he may need to jump out. So um, yeah, Ihani, why don't you give us a little intro to yourself? Um, 
like where do you call home? Um, how did you get into software development? Yeah, so um, a little bit about myself. My name's Ihai uh, I'm a computer science and graphic design graduate from the University of Notre Dame. Currently working at IBM Watson. Um, my hometown is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but right now I'm living in Austin, Texas. I'm working down for IBM Watson over here. Um, I actually got into software. I didn't start coding until college, technically, but I've been interested. Like whenever I was younger, I thought I wanted to be a video game developer, but then it came time for like to do the whole college thing, and I was like looking at video game design schools at first. But then I also started researching like salaries and whatnot and things about the video game industry and actually realized, I was like, okay, it's kind of, everybody's like they're underpaid and overworked because video game development is actually really difficult. <laughs> and so my cousin majored in TS at a local university and he's like, well, you just do computer science and then if you want to be a game developer, go do game development or you could also go do other stuff if you want, like if you so choose. So I decided to go and... Uh, do CS and haven't really regretted it since then and like I fell in love with like coding as soon as I got into the major and just started like learning like everything that I could from there. Cool. So where where do you work now? Oh just IBM Watson. And, oh right, uh, yeah. You, yeah. you didn't mention that, sorry. Um so um yeah, can you tell us something that uh you do that is not related to software development? Uh, so I dance. Uh, I, joined, I started dancing in college as well. I was in a hip-hop dance crew. So I do a lot of b-boying and all that jazz in my free time. So that's fun. And nice. I also like to design UIs and stuff like that. So that's cool as well. Cool. We, we need to get you at a conference. Uh, I want to see you at an after party. <laughs> oh, sure. I'll tear up the dance floor. I got you. Oh, yeah. Let's just do it. Let's just do it right here. I mean, I don't see the problem with that. I can't multitask. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, it is a video, so um, well, if if you feel so inclined. <laughs> so yeah, think on it. <laughs> what What's one thing um, that you've done with uh, regards to your um, like software development stuff that you would say that you're especially proud of? Hmm. That I'm especially proud of. I think in regards to like software development, what I'm proud of, what am I most proud of? That's hard to choose. I think helping Chef Watson become generally available is like my proudest like career moment because I guess it was like my first actual like project that I shipped post graduation and kind of was like a big deal and it's gotten a lot of like popularity in the media and the news and all that. So that's definitely like my proudest moment. Cool. Make sure to get some links to that in the Google Doc. That'd oh, be for sure. good for people. Sweet. Anything else that um, you'd like to mention about yourself or any of the other panelists want to ask? Nothing for me. All right. Sweet. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, Brian, why don't we go with you next? Can you give us a little background on yourself? Sure. Let me just say Watson is awesome. <laughs> so if you haven't used Watson, check it out. Um, and stop learning linear algebra yourself and just use that. <laughs> no, don't. Still learn linear algebra. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so I, I am a... Uh, what was I supposed to say about myself? Um, uh, just I live give us in, a background on like, how, you, how you got... Or, yeah, where, where you live generally and, and how you got into software development. Sure. Uh, so I used to live in Austin, Texas. Now I live in uh, the Bay Area. I go to, a, you know, they have meetups every day. <laughs> Free pizza. So um, there's a, I don't know, I started uh, programming after, uh, I used to be in a band, which is kind of em embarrassing, but uh, that's what I thought I was going to do with my life, and then uh, that kind of fell apart, and I started learning the code, and have continued to learn, and, and still learning um, every day, so that's fun. Oh, uh, Pam has something to say. I want to know <laughs> uh, what your band what your genre was. If you if your band oh. genre was a Netflix category, what would it be? <laughs> um, I, you know, honestly, we tried to do, like, Kelly Clarkson cover. It was, like, as if Kelly Clarkson wrote a song and we, like, badly so covered it. I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> yeah. I, did, you ever, did you ever go on tour? Uh, yeah, well, up and down California coast. Never nice. really, like, a serious thing. But no, anyway, so, yeah, 
Yeah, if you're, I know a lot of musicians that are, are are coders, and I think it's like all about like patterns and recognizing patterns and being able to um, deal with it. Anyway, that's my theory. But yeah, uh, so other than that, I I learned to uh, do object oriented for like five six years. Um, got way into like you know design patterns, Gang of Four, you know Martin Fowler, Bob, Uncle Bob, all these things, and then eventually fell into functional programming and have not looked back. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't really side with one or the other, but I've been obsessed with FP for the last like three or four years, so um, maybe I'll circle back around to logic programming or something. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so what? what's uh, the one thing that you've done uh, related to software development that uh, uh, you're like especially proud of? Oh right. Um, well, uh, let's see. I feel like I'm I'm proud of like my personal achievement. I think is like trying to learn like every language for at least like six or seven months before I move on. Like I've done, you know, Objective C, Erlang, PHP, Ruby, um, Python, Java. You know, just it goes on. Scala, Haskell, and um, so that makes me proud for myself because I'm like, hey, I can kind of cr write a crappy program in all these languages. Um, but I also I got my mug. I wrote this uh, little functional programming guide, uh, the mostly adequate guide. I'm happy about that. <laughs> That's about it. That maybe in, in the fantasy land spec um, on JavaScript. A lot of people go to that when they write functional stuff. So you'll see the recurring um, spec in like RxJS and ImmutableJS and things like that. So cool. cool. I didn't really start it. I just contributed. <laughs> Well, that contrib contributions are valuable for sure. Uh, so uh, make sure that we get links to all those things, especially like where we can get that coffee mug um, in uh, the show notes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was a gift from my old. Oh, also, um, I forgot to mention I work at Salesforce now. I used to work at Looper Kerr, and the the my buddies there got me that mug when I wrote the thing. But now I work at Salesforce, and I'm having a really good time. Really good people. So yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, Dan, you're the next on my screen. Why don't you go next? Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm supposed to just tell, like, my background. So uh, I think I started programming when I was, like, 12. And I did that by accident because uh, I loved uh, PowerPoint. So PowerPoint was my favorite program at the time. Uh, I didn't like uh, computer games. Uh, but I loved PowerPoint, and in PowerPoint uh, there is uh, this uh, service macros menu where uh, I stumbled upon it accidentally, and uh, I just found that you can like press record and do something in the UI and press stop, and then there's a bunch of uh, English lines that kind of correspond to what I did, and if I change the numbers, they do slightly different things. So this fascinated me, and my grandma used to buy me uh, books about Visual Basic, uh, Visual Basic for applications, Visual Basic 6, uh, and later I kind of transitioned to C Sharp and the .NET ecosystem, and this was when I got, uh, when I was 18, I started working at an outsourcing company, uh, just doing like corporate uh, mumbo jumbo C Sharp for finance companies. Uh, but I kind of grew tired of that uh, after a few years, uh, I think I, I was fascinated with like object-oriented programming and all kinds of crazy uh, uh, hierarchies uh, and uh, all the kind of object-oriented stuff. Uh, but later I got some exposure to functional programming and uh, I kind of loved it. And right now I'm, I'm kind of doing both a little. I try to stay away from object-oriented programming, but uh, I kind of do both. Uh, and I work at Facebook now. This is my second month at Facebook. I'm just finishing the boot camp, so I'm actually going to work in something that is not like random tasks from random teams, uh, which is for, which is really nice uh, that, yeah, I, I can do something. And uh, I guess in terms of uh, like what I would be uh, most proud of, uh, I think that would be, like, I'm not taking a uh, I'm not taking credit for that, but I think I contributed to uh, this kind of movement uh, in the community, this kind of feeling that uh, hot reloading uh, 
changing your code on the fly and seeing the results, uh, writing the running application, this is something that used to be like uh, not considered a mainstream. This was something that uh, seemed like a fancy demo for a conference talk or uh, like uh, a fancy demo for a purely functional language or something like that, but people didn't really uh, have, have this kind of productivity environment uh, when they work on apps. And I think with React Hot Loader, which was one of my projects that piggybacked on Webpack and React and their strong sites, uh, it kind of helped uh, to uh, gain some momentum for hot reloading. And I think a lot of people, when they create new tools, new languages, new, um, new libraries for JavaScript for rendering, uh, they, uh, I think this is now a baseline expectation that at least it's possible or uh, like possibly it's uh, but people are paying attention to that, to this kind of developer experience, and they want to have it on different libraries. So uh, I'm happy that this happened, and I'm happy to have made some contributions to make this happen. And uh, I promise you that we all are, are all happy as well yeah. <laughs> that you made those contributions. Um, cool. So what's what's something that you do uh, that you really enjoy that has nothing to do with software development? Uh, in fact, recently I haven't been doing much. Uh, I enjoy just walking around the city, uh, listening to music, uh, watching TV shows with my wife, and just being a regular person, I guess. Uh, I might, maybe I need to take a hobby, but yeah, not currently. I'm kind of in those same shoes. People tell me it's not entirely healthy, but... <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Is there anything else that... Um, that you'd like to, to say about yourself or your uh, things that you've done or any other questions from other panelists? All right, sweet. Um, we do have a lot of people and um, not as much time as I'd like, but um, so we'll move on. Uh, Getify, you're next. Ah, hello, everyone. Um, Getify, sometimes also referred to as Kyle Simpson. Um, I've been around this JavaScript game for a long time. I've probably specialized in JavaScript, I would say, for about eight or nine years, but really been working with JavaScript for about 15, 16 years, so quite a while. Um, probably most notably known these days for a series of books that I wrote on JavaScript called You Don't Know JS. Um, it's a six-book, 1,100-page series, and it's all online for free, as well as you can also purchase it from normal booksellers that was published through O'Reilly. So the first edition of that was just recently done, and I'm now working on the second edition of those books. Um, I am the head of curriculum for MakerSquare, which is a developer and engineer training school. We're based here in Austin, Texas, where I live, but we also have offices in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Um, so we like to turn out good engineers, and I work on curriculum for them uh, as my day job. I also do um, a lot of teaching of JavaScript, basically. That's what I do all the time. So I have online classes um, that I teach through Frontend Masters, which is one of the sponsors of the show. You can check out. I think I have seven or eight workshops through them. Uh, some of them, I think, are just about to come out. Um, <clears throat> I have several workshops coming up in person at conferences. So Forward.js, which I know Brian is also part of. Um, I'm teaching some workshops through that, um, so you can check out Forward.js. is coming up uh, in a few weeks, and then a little bit later, an O'Reilly Conference FluentConf, also in San Francisco, and I'm also teaching there. So lots of places to find me teaching. Um, also a free online webinar. Uh, this next Tuesday, I'm giving a free webinar through Forward.js, uh, so you can check that out. It's about um, some asynchronous stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's what I do. I work on teaching JavaScript and trying to figure out how to do that better. I want to know where you came up with your handle. <laughs> I do get asked that regularly, and I wish it was an interesting or, you know, whatever story. It's not terribly interesting. But, um, so the true story is uh, back in 2006 or 2007, um, there was a... Uh, series of TV ads done for, I don't know if anybody remembers, the ask.com search engine. I don't even know if they still exist, but anyway, ask.com did TV ads, which was weird in and of itself. But their TV ads were themed get affection, as in the word get plus the word satisfaction stuffed together. 
Um, it was a weird set of ads, and it was only on for like a couple of weeks. But I remember the very first time I saw that TV ad, immediately the verb form of that word popped in my head, the word getify. And I started rolling around thinking about how basically what I try to do is go out and get information and bring it back and make it accessible for people. Uh, so that sort of stuck. That became a company name, which is my side business company name. And when you're a one-person side business, uh, your company becomes your person. So it just became a personal moniker. So that's where Getify comes from. Cool. Um, I, I know that a lot of people have benefited and learned a lot from what you've done. So thank you for those contributions. It's awesome. And I love having you on the show because of that unique teacher perspective that you bring. Um, so great. Um, so uh, is there anything uh, that uh, like is totally unrelated to software development that's a hobby of yours? Unrelated to software development. Um, well, I play golf and ping pong. Most recently, a lot more ping pong, uh, mostly because of the weather. So um, I've been taking some lessons and trying to get better at it. Um, it's really good exercise and lots of fun. I, I found out just an interesting fact. Um, I guess sports scientists have studied it, and um, the game of ping pong is the most mentally challenging of all the sports. Like when athletes are playing uh, competitive ping pong, their brain is more engaged and more stressed than in any other sport. So uh, it was interesting. It certainly is a good physical workout, if not a mental workout, too. Interesting. Um, cool. Well, neat. Um, let's, uh, unless anybody else has under, other questions for Kyle, I think we can move on. Or Kyle, if there was anything else you wanted to bring up. If I can just plug two more quick things, sure. <laughs> since we're on here. Um, I do, most of the, most of the R&D work that I do in open source these days is around asynchronous programming. I think it's one of the biggest shortcomings for developers these days is, um, really knowing how to effectively manage, and there's lots of different things that you've probably heard of, but wading through all that is difficult. So a lot of my writing, a lot of my teaching, and a lot of my R&D work is around that. So <clears throat> just quickly, I have a quick, uh, I have a tiny little library called asynchronous. It's the word async plus the word sequence smushed together, and that is uh, a library designed specifically to help make it learning and using early on various asynchronous patterns easier to get around. So it tries to remove some of the rough edges around that stuff. Um, so async one's been around, uh, uh, and you might check that out. And building on top of that, I wanted to provide a way for people to understand the differences between the major different patterns, like reactive programming, uh, functional reactive programming, um, CSP, callbacks, promises, all those different things. So I kind of took uh, a page out of the to do MVC book and said I created a project called A Tale of Three Lists, and it is just a simple little demo of various asynchronous events happening. But then I rebuilt it seven different times using seven different uh, variations of asynchronous programming patterns, and that's all open source. Um, so you have a code base that you can look at side by side, seven different implementations, and try to get a sense of why one pattern is, has a strength in one area and a weakness in another. And I, I would say the TLDR of that is that I don't really think there's one pattern that rules them all. I think there's a mixture of them that really is most effective. So I do a lot with asynchronous stuff, and if you're interested in that, check out the things that I've got. Wow, awesome. Lots of really great resources. Um, anybody listening or watching, check out the website later for all of these uh, links to a ton of awesome resources. Great. Um, so Lynn Clark, you are the next on my screen. Hello. Uh, so I'm Lynn Clark, and I work from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania most of the time, but I travel a lot mostly to the San Francisco area. Um, and I work for Mozilla uh, on the Firefox developer tools. Um, so the way I got into programming is kind of a fun origin story. Uh, my parents were programmers. Um, they had a bespoke operating systems company back when you made bespoke operating systems. And... Uh, my mom actually was a programmer on Apollo 11. She worked on the trajectory for Apollo 11. <laughs> wow, that's um, impressive. Yeah, yeah, she's a cool lady. She also wrote a book on uh, modeling the stock market, how you could use computers to model the stock market that the Wall Street Journal uh, recommended. So um, she did a lot of programming um, back before I was... Uh, she, she raised us, so she, she uh, wasn't doing as much of that when I was growing up. But... Um, so I had access to computers 
at a pretty early age. But the the thing that um, really got me into programming was um, I had heard that the advanced placement um, computer science course at our high school was one of the most interesting intellectually challenging ones. Uh, but I hadn't taken the prerequisite. And it was going into my senior year. And so I told my parents this. Uh, and they said that I should teach it to myself over summer. I should teach myself C++ over summer. And I was like, sure, yeah, maybe. Uh, and then they went away uh, to take care of uh, my, uh, help my sister move uh, for a weekend. And it was SAT weekend, so they couldn't take me with them. And of course, being an American uh, teenager growing up in the 90s, like what you do in that situation is you have to throw a party. This is like the cultural expectation. Um, so I threw a big party that got a little out of control. And uh, when my parents came home, instead of punishing me, they uh, grounded me for two non-consecutive days and told me that I had to teach myself C++ over summer. Uh, so that's what I did. And I ended up being in this amazing uh, class. And, and that's how I ended up actually um, continuing uh, my interest in computer science. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much the perfect origin story for me because like the thing that I do outside of programming is uh, at coding conferences I mostly spend all of the uh, non-conference, uh, non-talk time trying to get people to go do karaoke and go dancing with me. So uh, <laughs> I think my origin story kind of combines the two halves pretty perfectly. <laughs> that's awesome. I know Matt Zabriskie and I can uh, attest to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, uh, React Conf. Uh, yeah, we'll have to find a good place. For sure. We already, I ha we already have one in mind actually. So. <laughs> nice, awesome, cool. Um, it's just, always a party. I just want to clarify: is that your parents saying that C++ was a punishment, or that C++ <laughs> was a motivation? I can't really figure out which. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that for them, um, they knew that like the best way to keep me on task wasn't to punish me, but to just like redirect it. Um, Cause I was, a, despite being a partier, I was also a pretty nerdy kid. So um, basically redirecting that energy. Nice. Um, so Lynn, is there anything that uh, about software development that you've worked on um, that you're particularly proud of? Yeah. Um, so there are a number of different things. I uh, have been a core contributor on a few different projects. Um, but the thing that I'm actually most proud of is uh, not even software. Um, it's the code cartoon stuff that I'm doing right now, which is basically describing different uh, architectures and patterns um, in stick figures. And I just had one come out today, uh, a four parts, the first part in a four-part series on Facebook's Relay, which I'm really excited about. As a reviewer, I can tell you that the next three parts are really awesome. Uh, so <laughs> follow along. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share with us, Lynn? No, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Matt Zabriskie, you're next. Hey, I'm Matt Zabriskie. Um, <clears throat> I live in Provo, Utah, which is like 40 miles south of Salt Lake City. Um, and I work from home uh, for a company called Instructure that's based in Salt Lake City. Uh, they do like learning management software, which if you've been to college in the last five, ten years, you've probably used Blackboard. Uh, our product, Canvas, is like a competitor to that. And in my opinion, you know, not that I'm uh, biased, but it's way better. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about myself. What what is that like a list, a bunch of questions we're supposed to answer? Uh, no, I I can ask you the question. There is okay, a list. Go for but, it. Um, so, what? Uh, uh, how how did you really get into software development? Um, so my dad <clears throat> was a, a programmer. He started in like 1968 uh, doing uh, assembly on IBM mainframes. And so I've kind of been around software development my whole life. He didn't do anything cool like program space shuttles, but uh, <laughs> um, just I kind of I've kind of was around it my whole life, but like wasn't really super interested in it um, until probably like early 2000s. Uh, like going through high school, I kind of wanted to be like either an artist or a musician. I didn't know which route to go. And so around 2001, uh, I had a friend ask me to design a website for him just because of my art background, which is kind of a little bit different than most of what I'd done. Um, and so I designed it for him, but then I didn't know anybody that knew HTML. And so he's like, cool, thanks for the design. How do I get this like built into a web page? 
And I'm like, well, I guess I could figure it out. So I Googled something. I guess it wasn't Google back then. Ask Jeeves. I don't know. And uh, kind of found some some uh, tutorials that taught me some HTML and some CSS. And I ended up building the web page for him. And it's kind of a fun process. And I was like, wow. It's like that's why that's why my dad enjoys programming. Like that whole process of like thinking things through and making something come to life was really exhilarating. And so that kind of was like the launching pad into it. Um, I did a few more small things like that and then actually ended up getting an internship at a company to do like their corporate website and ended up being there for like three years uh, as an intern for a year and then was hired on to uh, do some more software. That was kind of like exposed me to a lot of stuff. Like I learned Visual Basic there, did some C, a lot of PHP, um, and that was like in 2001, so about f almost 15 years ago. I've just been doing that ever since. One of the veterans on this show, actually just um, general question for everybody, um, I, and I probably should have been asking this to everybody, but uh, how long has everybody been doing uh, JavaScript? Uh, Matt, you said you've been doing 15 years. Yep. Um, anybody else do any longer than that? Uh, the first JavaScript I wrote was in 1997, so that would be about 18 or 19 years ago. Wow. Um, the first code I wrote was in 1990, so I've been around a lot longer than that. Oh my goodness. Well, I feel really young right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Matt, what do you do for fun uh, that's not related to software development? Um, I, like, I like the outdoors, just anything outdoors. I do a lot of rock climbing. I probably go rock climbing twice a week. Um, I do trail running most days. I take my dogs. I got two dogs. And uh, we live in Utah, so there's mountains close by, and we like to go out and run in the mountains. Um, I don't know. I like beards. I like music. Um, you can see, like, I got some guitars and a banjo in the background. Um, yeah. I hear the banjo is really hard to play. Can you actually play the banjo? Um, so my wife actually bought that for me as a birthday present a while back, and I'm not good at it, but um, I know a few chords, and I can play a couple little things, but I haven't really, like, committed to learning it yet. It's actually a resolution for me this year. I want to get good at it. Relatively good. Cool. Cool. So we actually have a couple of musicians around here. Um, so I'm a musician. I sing and I play the piano. Matt plays banjo and guitar. Brian, you play guitar, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anybody else play an instrument? I do a pretty mean karaoke on my good days. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, same. Cool. I play the oboe. Nice. Oh, cool. Nice. Hey, I'm super jealous of Matt's beard, um, so I have this really creepy, weird question. If you were to shave it all off, how long would it take you to grow that back to that length? Because that's awesome. Length? Yeah. Uh, two and a half days. <laughs> I actually <laughs> shaved this morning. <laughs> I, I would guess to this length, it would probably take me about six months, I'm guessing. I don't know. I haven't that's... been clean shaven in like ten years, so I have no idea. That's super impressive. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we should probably link to the Beard's Twitter account. I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Any other questions for Matt? Okay, cool. Uh, Pam, you're next. Hey. So I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Or, well, that's where I've been living lately. I'm actually originally from Kentucky, uh, in case there's any other Kentuckians. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I got into software development by way of, of the internet. Um, I, it's so awesome to hear how supportive of computers your family was, Lynn, because I definitely had a computer quota and, uh, you know, dial up and had to sneak downstairs during the middle of the night to use the internet to my heart's content because um, I was limited to only so much time per day. And, um, so it really, so, and, but like the internet also, you know, and even like, but in the weird way, like the way people limited my access to the internet encouraged me to get to the internet, like learning about proxy servers to go around, uh, you know, uh, content filters and during middle school, uh, stuff like that, because uh, they blocked LiveJournal, which was a really dumb decision. Um, so, uh, so there's that. So that's how I got into to web stuff and. Then I did some CS in college, um, but I didn't. I really realized that people would pay me to make things on the internet until uh, it was time to like go looking for jobs, um, and so that seems to have worked out. And I'm 
really enjoy the world of software development and feel like there's so much to learn. And there's just, I think it's so interesting that uh, there was um, Joe Armstrong's talk, I think, the one that said that there's so many states in the computer that literally, like, a general, like, if you boot a computer, you actually cannot hold all the things that are going on and understand them completely in your head at once because there's so much technology going on. Um, or if you read like the, the book, The Information, A History, A Theory of Flood, that the first half of it gets you up to like 1940. And then the other half of the book, which is like as long as the Bible, uh, is about 1940 to present. <laughs> so it's, there's a lot that's happened, and I think it's so cool. So. Cool. Uh, so uh, you, when I asked about how long uh, everybody's been doing JavaScript, you put up six fingers? Yeah, six, because it's like, I feel like I've, that's about how long I've been working professionally, and I really, like, you know, uh, and it's funny. So one of the things that kind of happens in the JavaScript community is a little bit of jQuery hater, I feel, happens, and it's a bit unwarranted because that's how a lot of people start. I started with, you know, figuring out jQuery plugins and making probably the worst carousel anyone has ever made. Um, like, I, the buttons were actually at the bottom because I couldn't didn't know enough CSS to get them on the sides. Um, so, uh, so you start somewhere, and so that's that's six years, but I've come a long way. <laughs> uh, haven't we all? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, what's something that you do outside of software development that you really enjoy? Um, I've lately been getting into gymnastics and aerial yoga by way of yoga, <laughs> regular floor yoga. Um, so I think that's a lot of fun. So I think it's cool to hear about you know. Ihani and dancing, and Lynn is, has the heart of a dancer, apparently. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, I I'm a gymnastics person myself. I'm tempted to just do a backflip right here, just like. Oh my gosh, that's like on my goal. So when I didn't get to do gymnastics really as a kid, it's like, and it's actually a lot easier to do gymnastics when you're only 40 pounds. Um, turns out. So learning gymnastics as an adult is a whole different game, and it's really. I think it's one of the reasons I do it too is to do something that I'm not good at, <laughs> and because uh, uh, I think especially overachievers have this tendency to end up doing things because we happen to be good at it and not because we like it. Um, so I like gymnastics, but I am really bad at it. <laughs> but that's totally okay. I relate to that. I, I that's why I play foosball. <laughs> Cool. Right, we'll play sometime. I'm actually really good at foosball, Kent. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I love playing foosball. I love it. Me but too. I, I get hammered. <laughs> yeah, I picked that up in grad school. <laughs> oh, <nice>. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking the gymnastics, backflips, foosball. It all <laughs> somehow connects. comes together. <laughs> cool. Um. So let's see what. Uh, yeah, so what's something that you've worked on in the JavaScript ecosystem community that uh, you're really um, particularly pr uh, proud of? So I did, I, I wrote a book on JavaScript frameworks, which, you know, so the joke is that it was out of date as soon as it came out. Um, but, you know, uh, it was fun to write it. It came out in 2014. Um, so, so I'm proud of it. And I, yeah, it's it's easy sometimes to overlook accomplishments by being by over explaining them, but I'm I'm happy that I did it. That's awesome. Curious, uh, what frameworks you covered? Um, it was Angular, Ember, and Backbone, and then like React got like a page, <laughs> and Polymer got like a page. So. One day I will write a book, um, but uh, I'm really impressed that you wrote a book. That's awesome. Um, anything else that you'd like to mention or, or bring up um, about yourself or any other panelists? You have any questions for Pam? All right. Oh, sorry, Kyle. Did you have something? I was just going to ask, since I happen to know uh, Pam, I've heard her talk about this before, but I'm just curious if you had any particular tips. You you said you've you've come a long way in the six years since you started developing. What are your you know top two tips for how somebody should kind of follow a similar path and learn the software development. What do you, what was effective for you? Um, so I guess there's a two part to this. I'm glad you asked that, and it's um because it reminded me of something I thought about while you all were all talking. In that, um, like I I am a social beast, so I definitely have like a bias towards this. But I I made a lot of friends, and that helped a lot. 
Um, I used to be, I thought of it as my Gchat roster. Um, and like, you know, trading Gchat questions with people of, you know, I ask you a question every so often, you ask me a question every so often, we all learn stuff, it's all cool. Um, so, and uh, another way to phrase that, that I learned last year that I really liked was never stay stuck for more than 15 minutes. Um, your progress will be impressive if you just refuse to stay stuck for more than 15 minutes. So once you've like thought about a thing for like 15, 20 minutes, you say, okay, now it's time to ask someone else for help. And just getting out of your own head helps a lot. Um, and then the, the secondary part of that was how do you make all those friends? And I think it's so fun to, I really, I'm very happy with the panel show because like one of the tips for networking, I think, is like pretend that everyone has something absolutely fascinating about themselves, like that they used to be in a band that covered Kelly Clarkson songs. Um, then, like, if you just pretend that everyone has something absolutely fascinating and you're, like, a detective that you have to find out what it is, then you will have no problems networking and you'll meet tons of fascinating people. Um, so, the kind of two-parter. It's a shame that we are all muted uh, and that the audience... There was a lot of giggling. Up <laughs> <at that. laughs> Big silent response, yes. <laughs> yeah. We could all just unmute really quick, and I'll I'll do that over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you, Pam, uh, and thanks for that question, uh, Kyle. That that brought out some good stuff. Um, Tyler, you are um, second to last, and then I'll go. Cool. Uh, I'm Tyler McGinnis. I am from Utah. I grew up in Southern Utah in St. George, and then now I live uh, in a place called Draper, which is relatively close to Salt Lake. Uh, I got into programming about three years ago, so it hasn't been that long. And I honestly, I initially hated it. Um, not a, a lot of people say like, oh, when I first started, I loved it, and it just like absorbed my life. Uh, I love the idea of it, and I love that uh, you could build things, and you didn't really have to have a lot of like resources, or, resources or a lot of overhead. Um, so it was basically my faith that eventually, when I got good at this, I'd really like it. And luckily, uh, luckily that worked out. So I just kept chugging along. Uh, and eventually, I became decent at it, um, and yeah. So now, now I'm here. Cool. And you're also kind of an instructor as well, right? Uh, yeah. So I was the lead instructor at a place called Dev Mountain, which is kind of Maker Square's version uh, here in Utah. Uh, so I did that, led curriculum, uh, taught classes there, and then uh, currently I work at a place called Sparrow. We just went through TechStars uh, in London. And we are building a React Native app to help connect individuals affected by cancer. Um, so that's been a blast. React, Nat React Native is great, and obviously the uh, the mission there is it's a pretty good one. So we're excited about it. Yeah, that's totally solid. Um, cool. So what? Uh, um, yeah, what's something that you do that's not related to software development at all? Uh, I bought a season pass to Snowbird, which is a ski resort here. I've only gone up once though because the whole software thing kind of absorbs my life. Uh, but hopefully hopefully I can get up more this season. So I would say that. Uh, snowboarding, probably. We should hit the slopes together, man. Uh, we should. I, Matt can come, too. Oh, yeah. Utah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so what's something that you're particularly proud of in uh, your software development or, or like, community building stuff? Yeah, so I don't think there's anything... Uh, like I didn't build Redux or anything like huge like that, but I think uh, for me it's just a lot of smaller things. Like I did React Week uh, last year, I think, and that was really good, just a, a workshop with React. Uh, I do a few newsletters, React newsletter, front end newsletter, uh, and those have been fun. So kind of just smaller, like React GS Utah, me and Matt do that. Um, so I think just, just smaller community-driven things is, is fun. Smaller community... It's awesome. What you've you've done is really awesome. So oh, thanks, thanks for doing that stuff. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Anything else that you'd like to bring up about yourself or um, any questions that the panelists have for uh, Tyler? I think I'm oh. good. All right. Sweet. So um, I've thought about how I want to do myself, and Matt is suggesting that I refer to myself in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> That could probably be entertaining, but I think I'm instead going to ask Lynn to ask me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so Kent, uh, where are you from and where do you work? So I live in the Salt Lake City area in Utah, uh, just like a 45 minute uh, drive south of Salt Lake. And I work for PayPal. I work remotely from home in here, and it's awesome. I love it. I just started a couple weeks ago. 
uh, working from home is the best. It um, is. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> and how did you get into programming? I know that you're young and uh, <laughs> and fresh to it. So. Uh, yeah, I am pretty fresh. Uh, so I, I graduated from college in 2000. Um, uh, 14, I think. Uh, yeah, so not quite two years ago. Um, and at the time, I was an intern at a company called Dumo here in Utah. Um, they do business analytics. It's like a business management platform. It's really, really cool. Um, and so, yeah, I I started there. Uh, they hired me to do uh, REST endpoint testing, and I I started doing like Cucumber with Ruby, and I like did some a little bit of Java to automate stuff and. Like I was just, you know, fumbling around trying to figure out how to program. Um, and actually, I should say, like, before that, um, when I first got started at BYU at college, um, I started as an electrical engineering major, and I um, took two programming classes, and I totally hated them. Um, I like I spent eight hours per class per week um, working on homework and just like coding. And I was like, there's no way I could spend this much time. Every single day, um, we're like coding stuff. So I, I did not enjoy it at all. I did really well. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I scored an A in both of the classes. I tutored people in the classes. So I enjoyed that part of it, I guess. But yeah, I did not really enjoy it. Tyler, did you have a question? I did. Was one of those classes CS142? Yes, it was. Oh my gosh, it's the worst class in the entire world. <laughs> and that's the class I hated. Uh, it's like a weeder class. So you have all these like bright-eyed freshmen who are super stoked to be building things, and then you throw them into the depths of CSS or C++. Yeah, uh, luckily it was Java. Uh, for me, it was oh, Java. Yeah, it was a little nice. bit easier. Um, but uh, yeah, the the really hard one for me was 124, where we had to program a calculator in assembly and um, a couple like something in um, in machine code, and and then we finally got to C, and it was like, oh, this is glorious. <laughs> I dropped. I dropped out before I I got to that class. Luckily, so <laughs> the worst. Yeah, yeah. So I um I was gonna do double E, and then I um I went on a mission for two years for my church, and and when I got back, um I like fumbled around a bunch of different majors, and finally landed in information systems, and that's where I kind of started getting back into computer related stuff. Um, but uh, yeah. So when I was working at Domo, I was doing kind of Java stuff, but I saw lots of my friends. Um, doing JavaScript, and I was like, oh, I want, I mean, you know, the last time I tried JavaScript, it was, like, weird, and you had this dollar thing. I don't know what that even means. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, it was, like, crazy. Once I figured out that was just a library, jQuery, and that you could have, like, a dollar for a variable, then it, it kind of made more sense for me. But, yeah, that was just weird uh, uh, as a newcomer. Um, but, yeah, so eventually I, I kind of migrated over to JavaScript, and then, like, every the floodgates opened, and I totally fell in love with, uh, with programming. And, uh, yeah, so I converted from intern to full-time at Domo. Uh, I worked there for a while. Then Matt recruited me to work at AtTask. Um, and then I, I ripped the uh, referral bonus out of his hands by leaving <laughs> in, uh, after just, like, two months uh, to go uh, fly kind of solo as a UI developer at Alianza. And then I just barely changed jobs uh, working at PayPal now. So that's how I got in. Um, I've just been doing it for about two years. I'm going to use Getify's question on you, uh, the, the one that he asked Pam, because um, you've obviously learned a whole lot in that short period of time. Um, what are your strategies for uh, keeping your learning going so quickly? That's a good question. Uh, so I actually, maybe I should link to this in the show notes, but I have a, somebody asked me a similar question on my Ask Me Anything, my AMA. Um, but uh, yeah, basically what I do to kind of stay abreast of um, things and, and learn new th stuff is uh, I, I think um, we, everybody is a different kind of learner and um, I learn really well from um, from watching somebody else do it and then building and then doing it myself um, and so that's why I really like Egghead I really like front end masters because I can see somebody else kind of explain it in video form um, and then and then I can go off and, and build it and, and fall over. I've built countless apps, um, Angular apps, vanilla JS apps, uh, jQuery apps, uh, just little things and, and a bunch of libraries. I, I do a lot with open source and it's making mistakes is, is how I learn. Um, and I think that is probably fairly generally applicable. Um, you don't really learn something until you actually do it. Um, and so like we may all learn, you know, initially learn things differently. You may be an auto, like a, a visual learner. You may be 
a uh, you know somebody who learns better from reading blog posts and, and tutorials and books. Um, but in the end, you don't actually learn it until you've actually done it. Um, and so yeah, I, I just do a lot of stuff. I spend a lot of time coding, um, and and then I surround myself with people who are a lot smarter than me, and that's why uh, you're all on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions for Kent? What made you start this podcast, Kent? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so um, about a year and a half ago, um, I, I thought of, uh, about this idea of using Hangouts on Air um, to ha just have like conversations about uh, programming. And I've actually done that a couple times. Dan was, uh, and I chatted about um, uh, Redux and and uh, module replacement and, and stuff uh, like a year ago on Hangouts on Air and I, I've I've done that like 11 times just kind of unofficially but uh, um, Todd Moto Moto I keep calling him Moto it's Moto um, but uh, Todd tweeted about a year and a half ago that he was uh, thinking about doing something similar and so I said hey like let's do this um, nothing really happened and then it, uh, in November of 2014. Um, I said, hey man, let's let's like make this a thing, and so we created Angular Air, um, and that's kind of where where it all started. We w went like every other week. We had an episode. We had the Angular team start us, and and we went for a year. Um, and then I was making this job change, and um, I was kind of leaning more toward React, and um, I wanted to do something more general, but I didn't want Angular Air to die off because it was doing great things for the community, and so. Um, yeah, and, and for those who didn't catch on, Angular Air is basically JavaScript Air, except for Angular. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Um, because, I because we all know Angular is not actually JavaScript, so they need... <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I I handed it off Angular Air to a couple of the, the panelists and uh, started JavaScript Air, and I, I reached out to each one of you panelists um, individually. I handpicked you all. And I'm so glad that you accepted because I feel like this show is um, like it is made because of you, awesome panelists. So um, thank you for for coming on. But that's kind of where it came from. Is I was gonna stop doing Angular, and so I I feel like I would have been out of context. But I would like I'm still doing JavaScript, and so because I'm still doing JavaScript, I started JavaScript Air. I I was going I, I actually was about to buy the domain ReactAir.com, and right at that point I was like. You know, in, in five years, will I be using React? I don't know, but I'll probably be doing JavaScript. And so I switched to JavaScriptAir.com, and that's how um, this ended up being JavaScript and not React. <laughs> so that's kind of the origin story for JavaScript Air. Oh, and one other thing. So the one thing that I, uh, or one of the things that I like to do uh, that isn't related to software development is um, I am a, a skater, like an inline rollerblader. Uh, so I I um, did that a lot as a kid, and then just last year I bought some new rollerblades, and I've been hitting the skate parks, and I totally love it. So if you're in Utah and you like to skate, um, join me. I love it. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so I guess should we move on to the tips and picks? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so we. Yeah, we, I think we've got like seven minutes left. We're probably not going to finish on time, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> this show ends up going a little long. Anyway, if you do need to drop out, let me know, and you can go uh, go first on the tips and picks. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and I'll... Um, yeah, we'll have Brian go first, actually. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I put some links up uh, for, let's see... Um, Hardy Jones wrote a really cool thing on lenses in the virtual DOM, um, and I've been working on Ramda lens. Uh, so it's I, I, I just woke up one morning, I was like, this is a great post. What a coincidence. Uh, I also put a link for the Lambda Comp videos. If you want to learn a lot about functional programming really quick, put those on while you're making dinner or something. Uh, and uh, two kind of artsy-fartsy things. Jeff Bridges, uh, the sleeping tapes are so fun to listen to. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, they did a whole Squarespace app or like website for it. It's really amazing. And then there's a uh, World of Tomorrow on Netflix. I just saw it and was blown away. So thought I'd throw that out there. Cool. Thanks, uh, Dan. Yep. Uh, let me look it up uh, in the talk. So uh, my picks for today. Uh, 
there are a few. So the first pick is called DevTool. It's uh, it's a new repo, a new tool for debugging node code uh, in uh, Chrome DevTools. It's kind of like Node Inspector, but it's uh, it's not as good for large applications because it, it doesn't replicate like Node environment completely. But it's pretty good, and there are some impressive demos. So check it out. Uh, another my pick is uh, an article that was posted maybe. Uh, a couple of weeks ago called React JS Pure Render Performance Anti-Pattern, uh, which details uh, the kind of issues people have with uh, React like performance issues and how to solve them. Uh, so it's really good if you have some kind of performance problems, check it out. Uh, it shows some common anti-patterns and how to solve them. And another peek is uh, a Twitter account that is called Fools Check React which just reposts some projects, some libraries, uh, but uh, it has nice screenshots uh, uh, on the tweets, and the selection is really good. So if you need to React ecosystem, you want to check out some uh, libraries, this is a, a good account to follow. Uh, then my next pick is uh, the code, code cartoons, uh, the Today's issue about GraphQL, which is completely awesome. I can't wait for the next parts. Great Chaplin. Uh, I love it. Thanks so much. Yeah. So uh, and the last uh, the last pick is just something uh, funny I saw the other day. Uh, basically, I came to San Francisco. Um, a couple of uh, uh, the last week and the week before that, as part of my bootcamp process, and uh, I had the opportunity to finally meet some people there uh, from the JavaScript community, and we were hanging out with Contra, uh, the gold guy, but he hates when people call him that. But anyway, so we were hanging out with him, and uh, uh, his friend took a picture and posted on Twitter with a caption that uh, Redux 2 is coming, uh, reducing Gulf streams, and. Uh, it was retweeted many times, and it got on Reddit, and there's a funny thread, but people took it seriously. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it for today. Great. Uh, Kyle. All right. Um, so the first one, I'll give a quick tip, um, and this actually comes from literally just last night. Uh, my tip is find a couch, sit down, and pair program with one of your friends. Um, and I actually did that last night. I invited my really super good friend and my barbecue buddy, uh, Brandon Hayes, who is Te Viking on Twitter. Invited him over, and he uh, just showed me a bunch of. Uh, we pair programmed on him doing a bunch of Ember stuff, and I feel like I actually learned some Ember. So um, that was super awesome. Very chill. It doesn't have to be like super formal, but it was really, uh, really good. Um, some quick picks. Um, Today, actually, and I don't have the link yet, but it will be in the show notes as soon as I get the link. Today, I'm going to be doing an on-air um, with Chris Coyer of CSS Tricks. We're going to be just um, trying to write some JavaScript together. Um, it's going to be fun. So um, we're going to try to take on a task and look at a couple of different ways of doing it. I don't know how that's going to work out because we actually haven't practiced any of the code yet, but uh, we're going to have fun with that. So check that out later today. Um, <clears throat> three actual picks. Um, RTC Everywhere just came out. Um, I am super excited about this. It is a port of the WebRTC peer-to-peer stuff um, for like all platforms, and it's the exact same usage pattern everywhere. Um, if you don't know what WebRTC and peer-to-peer -peer is, it's going to change the web. It is changing the web. Um, so I'm super excited about that library. Uh, so check out RTC Everywhere. Um, another one uh, yesterday, actually, Chakra, the engine from Microsoft, uh, from their new Edge browser. They submitted a pull request to add uh, Chakra Core into the main line of Node so that you'd have the option of running Chakra instead of V8 in Node. Uh, this has massive, huge wins for the community, for anti-fragility, for performance, et cetera, et cetera. It's probably one of the biggest things that's happened since Node was invented. So that's a huge deal, and I can't wait to see that go forward. And lastly, um, just a few minutes before the show came on, I saw going around, uh, we finally know what Brendan Eich is doing with his Brave software. He is launching a new browser called the Brave Browser. Um, you should totally check out the write-up on brave.com about that. Um, it's all about uh, uh, replacing ads with um, clean ads and ads that you can pay to have removed and still support the sites and stuff like that. So it's like your 
anti pro ad future in a browser. So interesting stuff there. Wow, yeah, that is, um, you probably heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, and uh, the chakra thing, I that's that's a pretty big claim, the, the biggest thing to happen since Node itself. Um, but uh, I, I'm excited to chat with them about that tomorrow. So, cool, cool. Um, Lynn, you're next. Okay, uh, so I figured since this show is all about how long we've all been working in software, I'd do some stuff related to making sure that you're a healthy software developer. Um, I have been uh, a professional programmer for close to 10 years now, and so um, I've run into RSI problems over the course of my career occasionally, and I ran into them most lately uh, in the past six months, and so I had to really adjust some things to make sure that they didn't come back. Um, so I have whole, a whole lot of tips for that, but uh, just one is to learn keyboard commands for your favorite web apps like Gmail, and flashcards can be really useful for this. Um, Brainscape already has um, flashcards for uh, Gmail and I think a couple of other uh, web apps, um, but for me it was the trackpad that was really causing a lot of my issues, and um, you might not realize it, but if you're having wrist issues, try using the keyboard more and, and not using the trackpad as much. Um, and so my pick is uh, I'm starting to learn how to do uh, Dvorak uh, touch typing um, so that you don't have to, to move around um, so much. Um, and it has made me a little bit, you know, I, I'm still training, so I still need to get up to my, uh, my speed, but I think it will actually make me faster in the long run. Great, awesome. Uh, Matt, you're next. Okay, um, my pick for this week, I just started it, so I haven't finished it, but um, I've been reading uh, Bonnie Eisenman's book, uh, Learning React Native, uh, published by O'Reilly. Uh, it's been really good. If you're interested in learning React Native and you already know a little bit of React, I uh, highly recommend that. Uh, as for a tip, um, if you're involved in open source software, I recommend using the first, time, first timers only label on your issues. Um, I just started doing this a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's actually been really a good experience um, helping new people get into open source uh, that might not have otherwise. Um, so just create a, create a label. Um, there will be a link in the show notes. Uh, you can just search for that label, and if you're interested in getting it open source, you can kind of look through those issues and find something that looks interesting to you. And as maintainers, we really appreciate any help we can get fixing issues, and for you it's a great way to kind of break in and, and get your feet wet with something. Awesome, thank you. That I that is so awesome for the community and so valuable. And I, I've been meaning to write a follow up. Your your first timer only issues are are fantastic. Um, but I've seen a lot of first time first timer only issues that are not really good for first timers. Um, and so if you are a project maintainer, please do first timer only issues. It's it's awesome. It's really rewarding. Um, but know that it takes more work to create a first-timer only issue than it would to probably just do the work yourself. Um, and so it's not about getting the stuff done, it's about helping people get started. So. It's true, like some of these issues are things I could probably fix in five minutes, but I spent 30 minutes writing a failing test case and, and sending it out there um, just so they give someone the opportunity. So it is more effort, but yeah, like what Kent says, like make sure it's like a good issue, like not something you have to really dig deep and understand the breadth of the code. Like that's, that's more frustrating, that's not helping anybody out. Yeah, awesome. Pam, you're next. Um, so, Lynn, we could totally rap about Dvorak and other uh, things like that. Um, but uh, I, so I guess before I do my pick, I just wanted to drop a link to... Uh, I have also uh, have dealt with RSI issues. Um, it also is generally, if you have smaller bones, if you are a smaller person, um, you are probably more likely to run into this because you have smaller bones for your nerves to go through. Um, so I have a post covering a from a few years ago covering a bunch of the different things I tried uh, and how much mileage I got out of them um, in terms of especially finding, working on things, I'm about things that help you in the long run and not get hurt again. Um, so a lot about that. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, um, and for the pick, uh, it is a purely fun thing. This is a, a, fun, a nice little side project that someone made uh, who's at the Recurse Center, uh, which is a programming community in New York that I did a retreat at last year. Uh, and it's a pixel art to CSS app 
Um, so you can, there's a little grid where you can create your pixel art and then export it to CSS, which is pretty neat. Um, so side projects are really cool, and it's always nice to see when people uh, show off neat things. Great. True words. Uh, Tyler, you're next. All right. I just have three picks. The first one is headspace.com. I've always really liked the idea of meditation, but every time I tried to do it, it was always like uh, difficult in the sense where you just like keep thinking of random things you have to do and whatnot. Uh, so Headspace has a very good like approachable, uh, I guess, approach to meditation that's really good. Uh, the next one, front of newsletter. I started this two weeks ago, basically just a newsletter of everything related to front end, whether it's React or either or whatnot. Uh, so check out that. And then React.run, it's basically, so www.react.run, uh, it's basically like a JS fiddle specifically for React. So I was pretty excited about that, and it works really well. So check that out as well. Great. All right, I am last. So um, yeah, my uh, tip is take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. I hope you get the reference. If you don't, hold on for a second. Um, because my pick is the Magic School Bus. Um, I, uh, I showed my kids the Magic School Bus episode about the water cycle, and they enjoyed it. So Magic School Bus is great. Um, and then Babel Service is this thing created by Gleb Bamatov that basically, uh, it's, it's just an experiment. I, I don't think that he's recommending you do this in production. I haven't looked into it, so maybe he, he is. I don't know. But um, basically what it does is it uh, um, is a service worker script that, uh, will transpile your code in the browser, but what's neat about it is it checks your uh, the the browser that's being used and only transpiles the stuff that um, needs to be transpiled for that browser. So like uh, Chrome has like a bunch of the ES6 features implemented already, and so this will only transpile the features that it's it's missing. Um, so it's an interesting experiment, um, and I recommend you go check it out. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, tips and picks. Just a yeah. side note, uh, that one's using my feature tests uh, library and service, so it also gets a big thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, and Pam, you're right, I should give credit. It's That quote was Miss Frizzle, and uh, she is the Magic School Bus teacher. Um, so, But what I mean by that, though, is, I, like, like I said, the way that I've learned is from building stuff, and I, I really am convinced that you don't actually learn something until you do it yourself and build it yourself. So, um, yeah, take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. Um, all right, so let's wrap this thing up. Um, so next week, again, we're talking with a, a couple people from Chakra Core team, and uh, so really, really excited about that. Um, yeah, really exciting things coming from Microsoft. Um, if you have any suggestions for future shows, uh, go to suggest.javascriptair.com, or if you don't like typing, suggest.jsair.io will also get you there. Um, that will take you to a form uh, where you can fill out and give us a suggestion for a show or, or a guest. Um, and then if you have any feedback on a specific show or any show, uh, any like the in general for the show, uh, go to feedback.javascriptair.com. And uh, as always, follow us on Google Plus and uh, Twitter and Facebook to keep with, up with the latest. And uh, also, this just in, ForwardJS, um, uh, actually, I think Brian, Getify, uh, and Tyler, and me are all going to be there. Anybody else going to be there at ForwardJS? So we'll all if be there. If you want to come, I can get you there. Let me know. <laughs> Plus one. So um, they have graciously given us a discount code, JS Air, for $40 off your ticket. So if you want to go, uh, use the discount code JS Air. All right, everybody, thank you for uh, coming. This has been a very awesome show. Tons and tons of good resources, um, and we'll look forward to the future together. <laughs> See ya. See y'all. See ya.